You've made it to the last video in this series on how to build a Mars weather app. Almost, sort of. It's my last part of this series. The last part of the whole series is over on Kyle's channel. I'll talk more about that at the end though. In this one, we're gonna be looking at that thing that's on the bottom that's sliding up and down and has the little animation going and we're moving the title around and we have an arrow that flips. There's a lot of stuff to do in this video. Let's jump in and see how we can do it. And so the very first thing I'm gonna do is come in here and do a previous weather, weather. And let's give it my background of var color light. Oh, not gray, light. Oh, you gotta spell things properly for them to work. Previous weather, there we go. Uh, so that's good, my color on this. Color can be var color gray. Hopefully that's dark enough. Ooh, it's a little light. What did I do in the original design? Definitely had that as darker. We'll go with this one. I think that's the one we want. There, that looks a lot better. Perfect. Um, on this, we're eventually, oh, let's do it now. We're gonna need a position of absolute on here, absolute, with a bottom of zero, which does that to it. Uh, so width will also be 100% to make sure it's the full size. Uh, so in the previous days, we can give that a display of flex and it should line everything up next to each other. Huh, we're almost done, look at that. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> All right, uh, you know, it's like 50% of the layout just, done. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so if we come and look at what this should eventually be looking like, we want it to have like our arrow here that turns around and we need this whole thing to move up and down. Um, now we do want this to like hide away and come back up. So the way we're going to do it, and I'm going to turn this off after, but we're going to do a transform on here. And I don't know how much we need to translate it by, but we'll find out. Let's just try 50% to push it down by 50% and see what happens. That's not too bad. Actually, let's do it a little bit more. There we go. So it's sort of like hiding away like that. Um, but we want our button that we can click on or our toggle thing that we can click on there. So if we come back and take a look, we have a checkbox that's gonna be set up with our label of weather toggle there. Um, so we can set that up to be that triangle-y thing that's gonna be right here. So to do that, um, going to uh, previous weather, previous days, let's go right here, because we're before previous days, and we have our, uh, we're gonna leave the checkbox on there for now, we'll just get rid of it right at the end. So for the next part is our show previous weather label, which I'm gonna also give a position of absolute. Now, because I'm gonna give this a background of a uh, little lime green, just so we can see it while we're working on it. So we have my little label that's there right now. Uh, so let's first do a left of 50%, which will move them over. Now it looks center, but it's not actually centered yet. So let's give this a width of like nine of, I don't know, 10 rem. Um, so you can see it, it's growing out that way. And even let's make it that bigger. Let's make it like 30 rem. So we can see like this is not centered. It's starting the left part at the center. So on here, we're gonna do a transform, translate, translate of 50%. And that should, whoops, uh, negative 50%. And that should suck it so it's like dead center now. So that's cool. Uh, it is nice and dead center. Let's bring this back down to like a 10. So that should be right dead in the middle. Uh, another thing we can do is a display of, actually I was gonna use a display flex and do some complicated stuff, but I could probably just do an align, uh, text align center on this. Ah, there we go, my arrow is now in the middle. Uh, so we were gonna make that more complicated than we had to. Uh, let's give it a font size, because we need that to be bigger. Font size of, uh, can we use one of my vars? Let's see, uh, maybe my H1 actually would be okay. Uh, font size H1, let's see what that looks like. Not big enough. H2 might be too big. That's not terrible. <laughs> and we'll give it a line height of one just to make it a little easier to control. There we go. Uh, line height of one and, okay. So we're, we're off and running a little bit. Now, once again, I wanna make a triangle. So if you remember last time or a while back, I made a triangle using a clip path for this one. So that was a couple of videos ago. Uh, we're gonna be looking at doing the exact same thing. So we're gonna do a polygon. Poly, uh, polygon, we need a clip path first. Clip path. 
polygon. And we're going to do the same thing. So 50% 0, 0, 100, 0, 100%, 100%, 100%. And of course, it's a clip path. And there we go, we have a nice triangle right there. So now the only problem is where it is positioned. So we also need to move it up. So we can actually do that where I did my translate. Here we did 50%, so I'm just gonna do a comma. And I think it's negative 100 that we need to move it up its total exact height. So it's in taking its own height and moving it up 100% of its own height, which puts the bottom where the top was. And it's exactly where we want it to be. And the other thing we want to do um, now is the background color can be my var color light. Boom, there we go. And so now when we click on that, the whole thing should come up. So actually, we want to make it look like we can click on that. So we should also put a cursor pointer on there. So now it looks clickable. There we go. Super duper. Um, my color, I guess I could actually change just so that's not so harsh. Um, color var color gray. There we go. And we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. So now when we click on that, we need a whole bunch of stuff to happen, right? Uh, so this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Um, so for this to work, we are going to need a little bit of JavaScript that's going to come in here. So let's just come here and leave another note for Kyle. Um, label here, so previous weather. So uh, when clicked, add show weather to pre previous weather div. Uh, so now, you know, the idea is if somebody clicks that, this previous weather is going to add a show weather class. So what is show weather going to do? Let's go and play with that a little bit. We can come down here and we can say show weather. So show weather is going to do a few things. One of them is we need to move the whole thing back up. So transform translate zero. Uh, what did we do that? Did we do a trans show weather previous weather? We did a translate y. So we'll stick with that translate y of zero. So it means that whole thing can slide up. Now, when that slide up or slide down happens, ideally we can transition that. So we can do a transition on there. Uh, so we wanna do our transform, say it shouldn't be too long. So like 350 milliseconds. And for now we'll stick with a simple ease. Maybe we could make that a bit fancier after. Um, so let's just come to here, inspect element, find that. So if we have show weathers on, we see it, remove show weather, it should disappear. So it slides down. And then back on here, previous weather, show weather. So somebody clicks on it, the whole thing will slide up like that. So that should work pretty nicely. So that slides up and slides down. And you know what? <laughs> uh, you know what, I'm looking at this now. Um, I originally did this with the label and the input here um, because there's a cool trick you can do, but I'm not even going to be able to do that trick because there's too many things here I need to change. Um, this would still work. Like we could definitely use this. Kyle could definitely come in and, and use all of that, but I think we're overcomplicating matters. <laughs> um, when I think what we could do is just have this as a button instead of a label uh, button. Um, the checkbox isn't going to help us at all. And it just creates a little bit more work in actually trying to hide the <laughs> hide the, the checkbox after the fact. So I'm going to switch that over to a button. So when clicked, um, I'll just say toggle uh, that. So I mean, it's a simple thing to do. So he can set that up. So when clicked, toggle show weather to previous weather div. Um, yeah, so that should be simple enough. So now it's changed a few things that we just need to fix up on that. Um, so let's just look here. I'm not actually sure why the button, why that happened, but okay. Uh, we're gonna need to put a border of zero here to get rid of that. And my fa I know my font family, family inherit. The joy of form elements not inheriting font families, I do not understand. There we go, that looks a little bit better. So we're back to where we were before. Um, so now we can 
now people can click on it and it should work perfectly fine and you know, we can tab onto it and everything. Um, I do think one thing I will add to here is, um, I think what we'll do is do a um, dot uh, and hover comma and focus, which normally I've been trying to avoid actually making these the same lately. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll just switch the color to var color uh, dark and font size. What was my original font size? H2. Uh, I'm just going to put like three rem. I just want to see what that looks like. Ooh, no, we don't want to do that. eh? <laughs> That's kind of weird. Never mind. I'll change the color and we'll leave it at that. So uh, at least there's some indication. There's a few little things going on that that should go up and down. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so we have, let's come back down to here now. Sorry about the little detour we just took. Uh, so previous weather, that is good. That is going to come up. Uh, but obviously there is a bit more work in the previous weather that we want to do. So when this does come up like that, show previous weather, what else do we want to do? Um, so in this previous weather, the other thing I want to do is my uh, show previous weather label. Uh, I called it label. I guess it can just be show previous weather, actually, <laughs> since it's no longer a label. So we can take that off there, that off there. And of course, break everything and then, oh no, what did I do wrong? Oh. And then fix everything. There we go, okay. Um, so in my show previous weather, when it's in there, uh, actually not on that. Um, so we only want this here, let's do show weather. Like that, right? Uh, so actually we want show weather and then this can just because this is gonna make my life a million times easier. Um, so when show weather is on, it's gonna slide up. <coughs> and again, let's just copy that for now and leave it here, uh, which we'll have to get rid of afterwards. Um, but show previous, or actually, what am I talking about? And there we go, so that'd be up. So it's when my previous weather has the show weather on it, uh, it's gonna come up like that. Um, but now we want that to also turn, right? Because we want this to be facing down in this state. So where to do that, we can come here and we can say my label. But we, we don't want our not my label. Let's do it the right way. Show previous weather. My, that, that's why we just changed the name of this. Uh, so on my show previous, we don't. what we don't want to do is do my transform rotate 180 degrees. Uh, because if I do that, the whole thing turns upside down and it's a complete disaster. Come back over to here and find my, uh, where I have my arrow, I'm actually gonna wrap this in a span. And close span. Uh, so now that we have the span in there, what I can do is come back to here and say, uh, the in here a span would be rotated 180 degrees instead. It's not gonna work at first, uh, so I'm just gonna do a display of block on here. Uh, so there we go, it is now pointing down and we could do like a nice little uh, animation on there if we wanted to. Uh, so right here actually we'd have our span, actually on here we'd probably have our display block, transform, rotate, zero. And we could also uh, then put in here a uh, transition, transform to, let's just say 300 milliseconds ease. Uh, so that should flip it over. Uh, now, another thing I don't really like right now is just where it's, um, you know, the way it's sort of up a little bit. <laughs> uh, so here we could add a second one of um, translate Y and give it like an, I don't know, negative 10 pixels or something. Uh, maybe it's a bit too much, negative six. There we go, and it looks a little more centered. So now if we turn off, let's come back to here. And again, uh, Kyle will be doing this with the JS, but uh, doo -doo -doo. right here, if we turn off the show weather, you can see it rotated around. And if I bring that back on, I'll do it one more time. If I turn it off, it goes down, if I turn it back. And if I turn it back on, it slides up like that. So there we go, perfection. I think it's looking pretty good and that's working really well. Uh, there's a bunch more stuff here that we need to do, but at least that functionality is here. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is to come 
um, we can easily fix this. <laughs> so I guess we'll start there at the easy part of fixing that up. Um, here are my previous days. I did my display flex already, but what we'll do is we'll put a justify content on here, justify content of space uh, between. So it'll space everything out. And then we could just add a little bit of padding of like 2M. There we go. So nothing is touching on the sides. And actually, I'm not going to put that padding on here. Uh, I'm going to bring that all the way up to here and do padding of 2M. The reason I'm doing it here instead is just so we, you know, everything comes together with it. Uh, I think that does work a little bit better at 3M. And, oh man, <laughs> the fun of CSS. Uh, my button has now disappeared. And this is why people don't like CSS, but come on, it is, I, I'm having fun with this. Uh, so we need to move that up a little bit. Luckily, it's really easy to do. I know I have my padding of 3M. So here, where I did my negative 100, I can do a calc. And in my calc, it is going to be negative 100 plus, uh, actually minus a 3M. And that should push it the rest of the way. Uh, this is where maybe rems would work better. There we go. <laughs> and we're good to go. Uh, so rems, we just know they're going to be more consistent across <laughs> the different areas, whereas m's one place, it could be different from another. So just like that, everything is working once again. And we can keep going with what we have here. Um, now, actually, I am, I'm going to come in and do a little bit of JavaScript. <laughs> I want to make this button clickable because we want to add an animation into here. And if I have to do it all through the dev tools, I'm going to go a little bit crazy. Uh, so Kyle can obviously change this, but I need this for testing purposes. Uh, so we're just going to create a const of um, toggle previous weather toggle is equal to document dot query selector. Let's turn word wrap on document dot query selector. And what was the name of it? Uh, show previa, previous weather. All right. So with that, um, previous weather toggle, add event listener, click. So when we click, we want to do a little function. Uh, and actually, that means we need and have another thing here, which is my const. Uh, previous weather will equal document dot query selector of dot previous weather. So when we click, uh, we are going to do a function. So we'll put a little arrow function here. And what are we going to do? We're going to, so somebody clicks on that, we're going to take um, previous weather class list toggle show weather. And let's see if it works. Of course, it's not working. Let's see why not. You got to spell stuff right. Is that my only mistake? I'm pretty proud of myself if that's my only mistake. Hey, there we go. It's working. Fantastic. So you can see the little rotation on there. Okay, much cleaner, much nicer. We can actually see it in action. If Kyle wants, you know, Change, change this if you need to. There we go. All right, so we have this working at least a little bit so we can make this, you know, because I want to add some animations and make this look a little bit more fun. Uh, so the very first thing I want to do is I, I don't want to see these. So previous days, so all of my previous day, uh, I'm going to actually give these an opacity of zero. So they should hopefully disappear. There we go. So when it's down like that, I don't want to see them. But when we have this, my previous, previous day will have an opacity of one. So we can see it, they hide. We can see it, they hide. I'm also gonna come up here and give this a transform, a transition of opacity of like 350 milliseconds. Opacity 300, 350 milliseconds linear. Let's just see how that looks. So they're there, and it's a bit annoying that when it refreshes, we always have show weather on, so let's remove that from there. And now when I click here, they appear, and when I do that, they fade out. So that's pretty cool, but I think we can do a little bit more than that. Um, so 
Um, so they're gonna do that where they appear. Now I also want this to be in the middle. We're gonna do, huh, this is gonna be interesting because I think if it's in the middle and then it shifts, like we see it slide over, it's gonna look really weird, right? <laughs> so this one's gonna be fun. Uh, we're gonna take show previous weather no, that's not there. Do, do, do. Previous seven days. That's my class main title. I'm going to give this another one. Uh, main. Uh, actually. Uh, because I'm not doing this for typography reasons, I'm doing this only for styling, like positioning and stuff reasons. We're going to do previous weather title because uh, I think it's going to make the most sense uh, to do it like that. So previous day. We're going to leave that. Okay. So. I'm going to say my previous weather title is going to be a text align center. And then when we come here, now we're going to do something fun here, but previous weather title text align uh, will be left. Now that's not something we can actually animate. Um, it's a little jarring that it just jumps across, but I think it works okay. I think that's going to work fine though, just having it like that. But what I do want to do is build in a little at keyframes. Um, we'll call it slide in, up, and call it that. Um, so what this is going to be is we're going to start an opacity of zero. Opa whoops. <laughs> at zero percent, we're going to have an opacity of zero. And we're going to have a, we should probably put this on multi-line because we're going to have more than one property on here. So opacity of zero. And then we're going to do a transform translate X, uh, Y of let's say 50%. So it's going to move things down a little bit. Then at 100%, the opacity will have opacity will have gone up to one. And the transform will have gone up to translate y should be at zero. Okay, so what am I going to use these for? I'm going to use it for these coming in. And you're going to see why now, because I like it that it fades in. But instead of doing a transition here, what we're going to do is a animation. Because now we can do two things at once. So animation will be uh, my slide up in 500 milliseconds. We're going to start with that. And so we should be able to Oh, whoops, I don't want it here. <laughs> uh, we want the previous day, we want that to be here. And we can actually take my opacity off of that then. Uh, the one problem that's going to happen, I think, is they're going to show up and then disappear. So here we also need to put in a forwards. And just based on how long that took, I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Let's do 750. So then they'll slide up and in. Just like that. Perfect. And even, you know what? Let's just see what happens. <laughs> uh, previous weather title. Can I put it on here too? Or actually, what am I doing? Let's just, let's see. I don't know if it's going to work fabulously on there or not, but We need a comma. <laughs> uh, actually, that sort of helps a little bit because it slows it down uh, like what I want it to do. So there we go. That's kind of cool. And so it gives it a bit more of movement. So it's not just like jumping to the other side. It's part of what's coming all in here. So you can see they're all moving into place. And what's cool what we can do now, I think, uh, is on here, uh, previous weather, uh, previous day, and child one, we're going to have to do a few of these. <laughs> so let's just copy that and two, three, four, five, six, seven. On all of these, we can do a nice little uh, animation delay, delay like that. And I'm going to do 100 milliseconds for the first one. And actually, I should <laughs> we'll just copy that on all of them. I could have done this a lot faster, but anyway, that'd be 200 and you get the idea. Let's see what this is going to look like.
And so we have it down and then it should be, they all come up one after the other. Now, I think that's a little too slow. I think uh, they should be finished a lot faster than that. So let's play with these numbers a little bit and I'll be right back. All right, so let's see now. There we go. I think that looks a little bit nicer. Cool. It's always fun doing little things like that. So a nice little slide in and then we can click and it all just disappears um, and slides back in. Cool, cool, cool. So I think that looks pretty nice and snazzy like that. So a lot of the fun stuff has been done. Uh, we're just going to finish up by fixing a little bit of the typography here. There's a really quick and easy thing that we can actually do. Uh, previous day, we're all in the previous day still. So um, dot previous day. I'm actually going to just select all direct children of it and say margin of zero because I think everything should be sort of stuck together when we look at what the final example, or I had it here, whoops. Um, see how everything's a lot closer together? So I think just doing the previous day like that, uh, getting rid of all the margins works really, really well. Uh, the only things I really want to change in here based on what I'm looking at right now are, do, 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 my, th this actually looks pretty good. My previous day Sol is actually looking pretty good, but the previous day date I'm actually going to change. So here and date. Uh, font size will be a little bit smaller and I don't think I have anything like that. So I'm just going to do a 0.9 rem and we're also, ooh, let's just take a look. That's better. And the color of that one was my var color gray, which might sort of fade it out a little bit too much, <laughs> um, to make it super readable. But I think that's okay. Cause if we click more info, we were filling it all up over here. Uh, so the last thing we want to do now is my button. So that was my more info button. So, and more info. And on this, um, we can, how do we want it to look? Let's go look at what we wanted. Uh, so we can do my border is zero. And we can use that border radius trick again. So border radius of 100 V max. Uh, background is my var color dark and my color is my var color light and I guess that should we might have to change a font size and padding so uh, text transform is going to be uppercase padding will be 0.5 let's start with 0.5m 0.25m <laughs> that doesn't look so good. <laughs> uh, why not? Uh, maybe I guess I shrink it down. Let's do 0.5 and like a one then. Oh, I'm mixing this up. That's <laughs> 0.5 should be top and bottom, and my one should be here. <laughs> it's always the smaller one on the top. I'm like, well, the shape of those looks really off, and even I'm gonna you know we can do 0.3 or something there. There we go. So that's looking a little bit better. They are buttons. So cursor pointer. Uh, usually I have that on my first line. I know I haven't been super consistent with that, but there we go. And we want to build in a bit of a hover on here. Uh, so the hover, we can nest that in here. And hover color uh, background. Background will be color var. Uh, we can just go to the with the gray is that gonna be dark enough so we can still read the text yeah that's good enough people understand what's going on and I will add a little margin top of like 0.5 m to these uh, just to create a little bit more of a separation I just realized one thing I, I did here uh, that's a little silly I nested this in here not that it mattered because we can't see it the rest of the time um, but that would make more sense on this area uh, previous day to have like the and star margin zero. Um, just because that was really raising the specificity, which I can't say, <laughs> margin top 1M. I think now I can overwrite it. Yeah, there we go. Um, before the way I had it set up, I couldn't overwrite it with this because the other one was two classes, uh, whereas this was a single class. Um, the other one was, this was being nested and it was coming later on. So just that fixes it. It lets me space those out a little bit because I thought they were a little bit too close together. And like that, it took us a little while to get through all of this, 
but it is done. I'm really happy with the result. I think it looks really, really good and it's all done and it was so much fun to do. I hope you enjoyed watching this whole series as much as I had putting it all together. Now, the next step is to go on over to Kyle's channel and see how he gets it to actually work with real data coming from the Mars lander. How amazing is that? How cool is that? You know, it's actual live data. It's all going to be populated in there. He's doing all the crazy magic that you can do with JavaScript to make that happen. You can go and watch his video right now to see how he takes what I've done and makes it all work in, you know, you makes it work. That's so cool. <laughs> so go and check that out. Uh, but before you do, make sure if you haven't yet subscribed to please subscribe to my channel if you're if you enjoyed this, of course. And a big thank you for watching a big thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here on this channel. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.